G'day everyone, it's Jerry here from Suckle and Fly Traps, your carnivorous plants nursery. Today is the first day of spring, it's the first day of September, so I thought today would be a great opportunity for me to give you a carnivorous plants update here at my nursery. Of course today is Father's Day, so happy Father's Day to you all out there. Hope you're having a great day. So starting off here, I've got these Venus's Fly Traps growing with the sundews and terrestrial bladderworts. So these sundews will start producing pink flowers very soon, being self-pollinating. They will produce seed themselves and spread it in, onto other pots. I always love seeing sundews because they do control pests such as aphids. How do I know? Because I've actually studied and looked at the leaves and they do actually catch them. So aphids can affect North American pitcher plants. I don't normally see them on Saracenia, sorry, on uh, Venus's fly traps, but um, yeah, they definitely do catch the aphids, so it's always good to see. This is a variety of pitcher plant, I'm not sure what it is. I bought that at a retail outlet, it only said Saracenia on there, it didn't give me much of a clue as to what it is. It must be some sort of a hybrid, but yeah, they're beautiful in their own right with their small red pitchers. Down the back there, I've got freshly potted Saracenia. These look like, yep, Saracenia flava variety is called Rubricopora. They're characterized by these beautiful red leaves. Over here, more Venus's fly traps. With their sundews as well, and terrestrial bladderworts. Over here, I've got a freshly potted Saracenia flower. The variety is called Ruglii. I think that's the way you pronounce it. Now, Ruglii are beautiful because they uh, they have this intense red coloration around the base of the hood of the pitcher. So I bought these around about two years ago. I do have enough of them now to sell them. So once they start growing and producing their pitchers, I'm sure they'll become quite popular. This is my little miniature garden here of Venus's fly traps. Sundews and of course terrestrial bladderworts as well. They're coming up out of their dormancy, as you can tell by the light green shoots coming up. So yeah, they're looking very, very nice indeed. <clears throat> so moving along here, you'll notice that I've got a lot of these disposable foam cups wedged between the pots. Now there's a reason for that. Foam is a beautiful insulator, so what it does is it keeps the water nice and cool, which helps to keep the roots of the plants cool. So the more consistently cool you can keep the temperatures, the happier the plants will be. Having those foam cups here also reduces the evaporation of the water. That um, makes it easier for me because I have to, um, I don't have to water the plants so often. So yeah, so I just saw these disposable cups and I thought why not put them to good use and looking back now I'm so glad I used them because I've taken temperature readings and yeah, they're, they're pretty, pretty effective. Of course, it's not just about healthy plants, it's also about giving you the best product money can buy. So moving along here, you'll notice here this peat moss mixture has a lot of sand in it. That's because I'm growing a very special type of sundew. This is a Drosera pygmiae, I think that's the way you pronounce it. And as the name suggests, this is a pygmy sundew, they're quite small. Now, uh, pygmy sundews are characterized by these rounded traps at the end. Hopefully you can see that okay. So yeah, they like a nice sandy peat moss mixture, so yeah, that's why I've given it this particular mix. Okay, so over here I've got more Venus's fly traps. I have quite a few of them. As I divide the larger traps, I always have the smaller ones and I just put them all into one pot just to save on space. Now I am experimenting here with a different type of peat moss mixture. This one's got perlite in it, as you can see by those white pebble-like objects there. Perlite helps to aerate the soil, much like propagating sand. So yeah, I'm just gonna see how the plants grow this season. 
So here, of course, are Venus's flytraps. Row and row and row of them. Now, I'm experimenting with these foam planters. So foam, as I said, being a great insulator, keeps the pots cool, which heaps, helps keep the roots cool. And that, of course, will produce a more healthier, more vibrant plant. Now what I've done here is I've placed the pots um, into these plastic bags, which has water in it. And on the base of the plant, I've got these, uh, these wicking material. So that helps to keep the peat moss nice and damp. At the same time, it helps to keep the roots nice and cool. So I'm expecting big results from this little experiment. So just moving along here, there's more wriggly eyes here. Um, as characterized by these white tags. They're looking really, really nice. Now, some of these have got flower buds coming out. Saracenia typically produce flower buds first, early in spring. After the flowers are produced, they then come up with new shoots. Now, talking about new shoots, you can see one right here. Look how beautifully red that leaf is. Oh, you can tell next to it, I've cut the flower bud off and gets followed up by the, the leaves. I don't normally produce, I don't normally grow the plants for the flowers. Flowers tend to produce, um, or they, um, the plant diverts a lot of energy into producing those flower buds. Instead I just cut those flower buds off and get the plant to produce those leaves which I'm after. So moving forward here, more Venus's fly traps more freshly potted Saracenia here over there as well these are Rupert Caporas look at it out the back there you can see this flower I've left that to develop on its own and being so heavy what happens is the flower stalk bends over and it's just a, a better way of carrying that heavy heavy weight on that flower More Venus of Sly Traps here. Over here you can see some sundews in there as well. A lot of these are big mouth varieties. Not all. I have a new variety this season, which I'll show you in a sec, but yeah, these are all looking really good. Look at this one over here, look how beautifully large those traps are. Okay, so moving along. So this is the variety, oh here we go, this is the variety I was talking about, this one seems to have an insect on there already, here we go, that looks like an adult ant trying to seek out a new territory, new nest site, oh well, has that been caught, oh that's been caught, there you go, oh surprise surprise, must have got in there, it's closed up, I think it might get out. Yeah, it looks like an adult ant, flying ant. Hmm, so this is the new variety I was talking about. So this is a, look how beautifully red those traps are. Absolutely gorgeous. This is a G16 times G14. It's a cross with a Dirk Ventham's giant. And I'm not sure what the other one is. It escapes me at the moment, but I will provide that later on. But yeah, so unlike the Big Mouth, which produces traps on the base of the peat moss there the g16 times g14 brings or produces vertical traps so the traps are produced vertically up into the air so it's quite a beautiful variety to have but yeah that is really interesting wow i wonder whether he's going to get out of course as he as he struggles that's going to become more and more tighter a trap and yeah we'll see whether He's still going to be there tomorrow. Hmm, fascinating. All right, so just moving along here, more Venus's fly traps coming along here. More Saracenia. Look at these ones here at the back. These two here, they're pretty much exactly the same size. Isn't that amazing? They're around about forty centimeters high. These. This variety is called Saracenia 
flava, the variety is called Capria. Capria refers to the copper colored hood. So the tops of the hood that are copper colored and they're so beautiful in their own right. So yeah, these ones started growing quite early, probably around the beginning of August. We did have a spike of warm weather, so these ones were the, one of the first ones to come up. Absolutely beautiful. And just having a look down here, look at this beautiful moss around the base of this Saracenia. So around about now, there's plenty of sunlight. That's because the Saracenia haven't come up yet. Now for moss, this type of moss, they don't like too much sunlight. They like to have a bit of shade. So as the Saracenia come up with their leaves, more shade will be produced and the happier the moss will be. As a result, the moss will become more vibrantly coloured. Now here you can see that there are these brown coloured spore capsules. That means that they're quite ripe. So if you touch them, you should see some spores being floated into the air. That's why I've placed this empty pot here to capture those spores and hopefully to grow some moss on the top. Yeah. So there you have it. Just a update of my nursery. Um, hope you're having a great Father's Day. Hope your plants are coming up as well. I'm so glad we got some rain recently. It really has produced a hive of activity here oh look at this one here how could i forget this one here this is my first picture that's been produced in my entire collection this is a saracenia flava the variety is called rubricopora now rubricopora means red veins and you can see the red veins there on the back of the hood but look how beautifully red that uh, tube is the best way to describe it is it's a clayish red color that you find on bricks and they really are beautiful. So Saracenia flava typically produce their best pictures in spring and that's what you're seeing right here. They produce one or two pictures per rhizome and those pictures are quite large. Now just to give you an idea, they're quite erect these pictures. That's always a good sign because that means that your plant is getting plenty of sunlight. As a, as a general rule, the more sunlight you give them, the healthier the plants will be and the more erect those pictures will be as well. Look how beautiful that is. Okay everyone, until next time, happy growing and once again, happy Father's Day.